Hello and welcome to this video where I will talk about the new WHX by Jungle Lab. And before we start, I just want to clarify that this is not a sponsored video or anything, so I'm free to say whatever I want. <laughs> and in this video today, I will go through the feature of this pedal while at the same time stating my opinion on them. So first let's go through the basic features and on the front here we have the usual stuff except for the volume knob. And this volume knob has been carefully designed to do what it's supposed to do, you know, only change the decibels and not the tone. And I think this is a super useful feature because if you have it all the way up you have that classic boost that we all know and love, at least if you have an appropriate setup which I talked about in other videos. And if you turn it down a little bit you have the possibility to try to emulate the vintage uh, version 1.5 which had no volume boost. And also if you want to use this in other contexts with perhaps a clean setup then this knob can be really useful to balance the volume. And then on the side here we have the depth knob just like we wanted to and the dry output which as stated on the website no one really uses but <laughs> good to have in order to be faithful to the original. And then just like the original we have the guitar and bass switch. And I really love the position of this switch. First of all I think it looks really good and I also like that it doesn't stick out on the side because then I feel like it's more vulnerable to damage and you would also run the risk of flicking it without you noticing perhaps if you put it in a bag or something. And me personally I mostly use the guitar mode so I think the level of accessibility is just perfect for my needs. And now we get to some more interesting features and the first one is that the enclosure is actually made of 3D printed ABS plastic. And I had to admit I never really understood why the version 1 was in plastic but after trying this one in plastic for the first time I really feel like I start to understand it. You know the feel is completely different. It's kind of hard to explain but it feels like you have better control of the pedal and it feels like it interacts with the playing in a whole different way. And I should also add that since this is in ABS plastic it's a lot more durable than the version 1. And another aspect is that this is super comfortable to turn on and off. And if I do this thumb test here I can easily turn it on and off just with my thumb. And if I try to do that with a metallic enclosure version I will literally break my finger. <laughs> And you can also notice that I can turn this on and off without rocking it backwards in between. Which I can't do with a version 2 and from what I heard you can't do with a version 3 either. And this is a super useful feature if you want to do that EQ effect that John did on By The Way. Where you just step on the pedal and leave it in the top position for that EQ effect. And then you just want to turn it off without you know sweeping it and affecting the sound. And the next feature is the partially encapsulated potentiometer. Which reduces the risk of dust getting caught in there and giving you a scratchy sound. Which pretty much ruins the pedal. So hopefully this feature proves to be effective and if so then this pedal will last a lot longer. And the next feature is the circuit which is a faithful recreation of the version 1. And you know in some contexts when I just use the wow pedal without any distortion or fuss I don't notice that big of a difference between uh, this one and the version 2. But in other contexts like in the beginning where I used both the DS2 and the fuss right in combination with this one I actually hear a large difference. It's really hard to explain but I find that I get that clear and sharp sound which at the same time is really you know thick and that you associate with Frusciante's sound. And I just find that I don't really get that with the version 2. And the final feature I want to bring up is related to what we discussed here with the circuit and that is the bypass which is a buffered bypass. And this buffered bypass modifies the impedance of your signal which in turn affects the sound of your other pedals like for example the Big Muff or the Fussrite. At least that is what is claimed on the Tunglo Lab website so what I thought I would do is to test this out. So what I will do is to first have this in the chain be turned off and then disconnect this from the chain. And I will do this comparison in four different scenarios. First without any other pedals at all turned on and then with the DS2 and then with the Big Muff and then with the Fuss Right. And I should also note that the chorus ensemble is in the chain all the time giving me the crunch sound. So yeah let's take a listen to that.
So here I think we got really clear results, or at least I couldn't hear that big of a difference for the cases of using no pedals at all or having no pedals turned on and using the DS2. But when we kicked in the fast pedals like the Big Muff and the Fast Right, I think we could hear a really large difference. And I think those pedals sounded a lot better with uh, the W. HX in the chain. So what are my overall reflections and conclusions on this pedal? Well if we step back a little bit we can note that John Fushante's former guitar tech Dave Lee in interviews has stated that they always had a problem with the Wii One breaking all the time. And they even had this cool story where Eddie Van Halen himself helped them provide with a version 1 pedal before a show when they have run out of them. And Dave Lee has also stated that Frusciante tried the version 2 but didn't really like the sound of it. So what does that mean for the rest of us who want a Frusciante inspired chain? Well since the version 1 is really rare it becomes really expensive and if we manage to get a hold of one I guess most of us would never really dare to use it. <laughs> so that means that most of us have chosen another option like the version too. And because of that we have had to compromise on the sound and the feel that we can get. And I believe this pedal has incorporated all the pros from the version 1 while solving all the cons from it so that we no longer have to compromise. And yeah that is the video and as a thank you for watching all the way to this part I want to share a little bonus. So a couple of days ago I did an Instagram post where I shared my progress on making a bass backing track that I thought I would use to demo this pedal. But when I tried jamming to it I didn't find that a wawa riff fitted to the track and I got a response from Jess Yuta that he could jam on it just for fun and that made me really happy because I have always been really inspired by his playing and I think what he did in this jam here is just as inspiring as everything else that he has done. And yeah with that said thank you very much for watching leave a like for the algorithm and comment what you think on this pedal and I'll leave you with this cool jam with Jess Yuta so yeah see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.